Hi, and welcome to the solar test field at Tamera Eco Village in Portugal. I'm Dr. T.H. Culhane of Solar Cities, and I'm a National Geographic explorer who's been working and living with biogas extensively for the past six years. What excites me most about biogas is it completes the cycle. We always talk about recycling, but biogas is at the center of sustainable development and recycling because it's the only technology that anybody can do that will take 100% of your organic waste. I mean anything that was once alive. Kitchen scraps, oil, grease, fats, uh, the toilet wastes of any animal, including us, and then rapidly, within 24 to 36 hours, turn it into a nutrient-rich liquid fertilizer that is, has no comparison, much better than solid uh, aerobic compost, and it turns into this clean, burning, absolutely uh, safe, natural gas. And so, with those values, you've solved waste management, You've solved problems of disease vectors like rats and flies and, and vermin and, and you know, wild dogs or raccoons or cats getting into the garbage bin. All that goes away. And indoor air pollution, that goes away too. There is no chance of getting polluted by biogas. There's no smoke. There's not even carbon monoxide. It's safe and clean burning and it doesn't spark. It doesn't flame. It's not going to burn your house down. So you eliminate the need for charcoal and firewood. And that attendant respiratory illness that comes with that, you know, with over 4 million women and children dying every year from, from lung disease caused by burning stuff. So it's so clean burning and it's so safe. And then, of course, since you don't need firewood and charcoal, you don't have to cut down the forest. So it stops deforestation. It stops the flooding that occurs when forests are removed. So you have all of this loss of life that's avoided. And not just loss of human life, but biodiversity. With biogas systems, you stop the loss of biodiversity. And in fact, you enhance biodiversity because the fertilizer that comes out is so nutrient rich that you can make the desert bloom. We grow in the city on people's roofs, on their porches, in their living rooms, in their basements. You don't need soil at all. So you can turn the food production cycle right around where food waste becomes food once again, anywhere in the world. And then you get this wonderful gas, which you can use to light with. You can use gas lamps. You can certainly cook with it, of course, and that's a great value for it. You can run gas refrigerators. You can run gas uh, engines to generate electricity. You can do anything with biogas that you can do with natural gas or butane or propane. So it's a wonderful centerpiece technology. It's got me pretty excited. When I came here in 2011 to the test field, I found that they were cooking with a Seffler mirror, this wonderful solar cooker here, and they were working to live fossil fuel free. But of course the sun doesn't always shine, particularly in the winter, and they wanted to find a way to cook without using fossil fuels year round. So we introduced the floating drum digester from India. This here, one of the simplest forms of biogas system that you can make. Now all this is, although it may look complicated, is a bucket with another bucket inside it, like that. This bucket is made of two concrete sewer rings that were discarded by the side of the road. And they're cemented together on a slab underground there, about four cubic meters. They go about two meters deep. And then on top of that is a water barrel, upside down. That's all it is. Right now, you can see it's risen all the way up. It's floating on water because this bucket here is filled to the top with water and manure. We used horse manure, you can use cow manure. I use my baby's diapers and the one I have at home. You can use your own manure. Any source of animal manure for the inoculant. That was put in the first day. And then the top barrel was put in upside down so that it sank into the water, like that. What happens then is the manure ferments food waste if you put it in and that makes bubbles. Just like your stomach when you eat beans. It flatulates, if you like. And then the inner container rises up. So this is full right now with three cubic meters of biogas. And that biogas is what they use to cook in the kitchen. A clean burning methane gas. And basically that's it. Here's the throat right here. That's where it's fed. And around here on the side is an overspill because every time you feed it, it overspills fertilizer, which goes into here. 
And that liquid fertilizer is the most nitrogen-rich, wonderful fertilizer for plants to grow food again. So we're literally turning food waste into fuel and fertilizer. Right here we have the Solar Cities IBC biodigester, which we invented back in 2009 in Cairo, Egypt. And why? Because we wanted to make sure that urban dwellers could use local materials and build their own effective biodigesters right in the city, even in people's homes, in their basements, on their porches, on their roofs, even in their kitchens. These containers here you might recognize, these are the International Bulk Containers, or IBCs. They're used to ship goods all over the world so they can be found in every country, sometimes for free. The most they ever cost is $175. The average price is about $100 when they're used. They are one cubic meter, which is just the right size for a digester that can produce about two hours of cooking gas each day for a family of four to six people. So they're an ideal size and they're really easy to turn into biodigesters the Solar Cities way. In the Solar Cities way, all you need are three pipes. You have a feeding pipe, which is the mouth or throat of your biodigester, and that goes all the way down to the bottom of the tank. You have a gas out pipe coming out the center cap, which I think you can see a little better on this tank here. And you have a fertilizer pipe on the other side across from the feeding pipe. That's what pees out that nitrogen-rich liquid fertilizer. It's a little different than the one that we built by the kitchen in that this one doesn't store its own gas. It just makes the gas. You feed it your food waste here, the fertilizer overspills into another container, into your garden, into your drip hose over there, and then you've got the gas coming out here. But where does the gas go? The gas can be stored, in this case, in balloons, like this one here. This balloon is just a pillow made from PVC plastic. You can make it out of roof membrane or pond liner. Just a pillow that holds gas and water. And you can buy them also from China, from India, from Israel, from places where biodigesters are sold. It's very simple and we fill it with a garden hose because there's no high pressure. And that garden hose is filled into the bag and then we want to light the bag. You can see it's so clean burning you can almost not detect it until I put the straw in front of it. And then you can see, yeah, there's a lot of burning gas there. But very safe, very clean. And it's lightweight. The bag can be carried to your kitchen, carried from one village to another, plopped down and hooked up to a cook stove. Speaking of cook stoves, the cook stoves that we make are very simple. We make cook stoves out of old paint cans or coffee cans filled with stones to spread the flame. We take our biogas hose, we stick the hose inside, and then we turn on the valve and we light it. And once again, I think you can see I put the lid on it, and I light it again. Now, you've got a wonderful stove that you can use to cook on. And it works just as good as any kitchen stove, but it costs next to nothing. So, there's a lot of uses for biogas. Here's a torch made of biogas, too. A lot of fun and really safe. Biogas has very little odor. When there is gas, you can smell a slightly acrid hydrogen sulfide or swamp gas or rotten egg smell. When it burns, it has no smell at all. If you look down there, you can see what I'm talking about. No smell. No smell, no carbon monoxide, just carbon dioxide and water, very safe and non-toxic. 
Another thing we're experimenting with here at the Tamara test field is different ways of using the gas bags. This is a gas bag we built in Pennsylvania with eyelets so we can hang it from the roof and then hang on a broomstick a pallet, a wooden pallet, to provide the weight to give the pressure that pushes the gas to the kitchen because gas in biogas is very low pressure. Here again we're using garden hose and now with this pallet when I light it I get a nice big flame as you can see because of this because of this weight. I'm standing here confident lighting this standing next to a full bag of gas because biogas can be so safe. Yeah it's hot, it burns, it's gas. But because of its composition of methane and carbon dioxide it doesn't have explosive potential like a bottle of pure natural gas. It burns nice but it burns safely. And that's uh, one of the beauties of this and why you feel confident that you can try this at home. Whew. There are two critical things you need to know to keep your home biogas system working well. The first is pH. Don't overfeed it. Every thousand liters or one cubic meter, like the size of this tank, can only be fed about one bucket of ground up food waste a day. More than that, it gets indigestion, gets a sour stomach. And all you have to do then is give it a basic solution, sodium bicarbonate, like baking soda or sodium carbonate washing powder or lye drain cleaner crystals, something that will bring the pH back to neutral, and then you should be fine. The other thing that you need to know is that the temperature is very important. Biodigesters like to be kept warm because the microbes that live in them came from an animal's stomach, and there they had body temperature. In this experiment, we have one IBC painted black that sits in the sun and heats up all day, but at night it loses all its heat to the air. And that's not good for the microbes. They get slow and sluggish, and they can get indigestion by being too cold, just like you. So think of it like a stomach. In this one, it's also painted black, but we've used cellophane stretch wrap plastic to create a thermal air barrier so that the black surface can heat up but most of the heat doesn't escape at night. And with this we're hoping to keep the temperature warm day and night. In that other system we had a solar hot water heater on the roof pumping hot water all day through the digester. That's another way to get really good temperatures and that's why that one's so full. But we have another thought that we're working on on how to keep that heat overnight. Come on with me and I'll show you. Meet Sao Paulo. This is a biodigester system that replicates what we've done in Sao Paulo, Brazil, in the favelas, inside the city, in a home. The only difference here is we have put an insulation jacket of straw bale on one of the IBCs, the primary digester. So rather than putting the plastic that we showed in the last one, we literally surrounded this digester with a bunch of these stacked up. And then we put clay and lime and straw and mixed it together and made a coating so that it looks nice and we can paint it. So this is just one IBC, but whatever heat we put in, and we're putting coils down at the bottom that we're gonna put hot water through, and then the heat will rise inside. This should retain all that heat even when the winter is cold. And it's the same thing, three pipes. Feeding pipe here, gas pipe out the center, fertilizer pipe coming out the back. Nothing more difficult than that. The gas here, however, because we don't want to assume everybody has pillow bags to store the gas, we're using another IBC here to store the gas. Because if you can get one IBC, you can get three. So we have one producing the gas, then there's the second one that's filled with water, and as the gas pumps in here, it pushes the water down and it spills out into this bucket and fills it with gas. And you can see the gas line right here as the water is forced out by the gas. We're filling this with biogas. Then we pump this water up to another tank on top and when we open this valve the water will push down and then push the gas to the kitchen. So this system has been in operation in Sao Paulo for two years. We built one in Cairo six years ago. We built one in San Francisco, another one in Los Angeles, and we built six in Alaska. So we know this technology works really well so if you've got IBCs, you can build a biogas system out of common plumbing parts. The experiment here is just how hot can we keep that tank, and that's where straw bale really seems to shine. This biodigester, just to give you an idea of what the integration is, is going to produce the gas that will cook the roses that are being used for their essential oils, as well as these pine needles to get essential oils from them. 
We use gas right now, and you can see the bottles. They're using bottled gas, and we want to get away from fossil fuels. So we are going to run this cook stove off of the gas from that IBC container. And then, when they heat this up to do their distillation, we'll take that heat and use it to cool this. I'll we'll use cold water to cool the heat and send the hot water back to the digester to heat the digester to make more gas. So it's an integrated system. Heat from the processing keeps the biodigester warm. The material that is used and discarded is fed to the digester, it produces the gas, the gas comes here, and it does the cooking, and the cycle completes itself. So we hope you'll join us in this revolution. We like to say that none of us are truly professionals in this. We're people who are tinkering, like in the early days of cars and airplanes, and we want, to, we want everybody to join us in this, so please do try this at home.